Hello everyone, another video about e-bikes, electric bikes, and this one I will be demonstrating how to install a pedal assist system, okay, PAS. Now a pedal assist system allows you to control your motor using just the pedals, don't have to use your hands. I will be installing a common two-part sensor that uses magnets. To aid this demonstration, I have three years of experience working with electronics, okay? I have an associate's degree, ha ha ha, that's not much, but I've been around all kinds of electronic things. I did a project with programmable logic controllers, worked with all kinds of sensors, so I know a little bit about sensors and electronics and stuff. I also have been maintaining this bike for the last 10 years, so I, I know a little bit about bicycle maintenance. I've replaced bottom brackets, I've chewed the wheels, all kinds of things, so I have some experience under my belt, okay? Now, to Install a pedal assist system that comes with an e-bike conversion kit, right? So you either interested in e-bikes or you already have a conversion kit and you're trying to install different components of it, okay? So to install a pedal assist system you need some zip ties, this is what's in this bag, and Velcro different things to secure the wires to the bike from the pedal assist. You'll, you'll need something like that, okay, because the pedal assist system is right near the cranks. It's going to be stuff moving around. You need to secure it. I recommend Velcro because you can remove it. Uh, twist twist ties can, can cut you and scrape you and stuff because they have pointy edges. I recommend Velcro. You'll need some tape. Uh, probably a strong tape like duct tape would, would be recommended. And you may, you may need epoxy. I didn't use epoxy. It's a good thing to have though, okay? You, you might want to use it. We'll get into that later. Now, I recommend that you install the pedal assist system onto the bottom bracket itself. And to do that, you're gonna need some, some tools to remove the bottom bracket, right? Gonna and maybe some of the cups and, the, and to r remove your bottom bracket or d to gain access into it, you're gonna need a flathead screwdriver. Always a good thing to have. You'll want a crank puller, like this guy. This is a park tool crank puller. It has a middle part that spins, and this outer part which goes into the. Uh, the crank arm, crank puller. I don't remember how much this thing cost. If it's park tool, it was, it's probably like 10, 20 bucks, something like that. These are a good thing to have. They work with pretty much any bike, okay? It's not like some tools which only work on like one bike and then it's annoying. I also recommend having an adjustable wrench. This is an eight inch, this is a 10 inch actually. Eight inch or a 10 inch, okay? A, a six inch, did not work with this crank puller. This crank puller uses American measurements, not metric. Make sure you have the right wrenches for the, the crank puller, okay? You will need either a socket set and a ratchet to remove the, the bolt on the crank arm, or you may have an Allen head bolt on your crank. So that in that case, you'll need some Allen uh, Allen keys, right? You, most people have Allen keys. Um, you'll have to take off the little cover to see what what uh what you have under there, but we'll get to that later. Both of the bikes I worked with used hex bolts, which is why I have this. To remove the bottom bracket, you will need the appropriate bottom bracket remover tool. I am using this uh, bike hand. 20 tooth. Um, my bottom bracket is a BB55, I believe. I upgraded it from 
a typical cheap bottom bracket, you know, just a bearing and cup bottom bracket. I upgraded to a sealed bottom bracket, BB55. That's why I have this tool. Um, you might have an older bike, and in that case, you will need a C spanner and a box wrench. Uh, you probably want to go to a bicycle mechanic. Um, I almost tore up, I actually broke one of the old metal cups on my bike because I had to take off the fixed cup and those are really hard to take off so if you're just taking off the adjustable cup you you could probably get away without going to a bicycle mechanic but that's why I have this I'm gonna take off the adjustable cup and put the pedal assist system onto that cup and that's why we have this. Now this uses a weird size, or I don't know what size this is. You'd need an adjustable wrench to get on, on these. Okay, but I'm not using the outside here to tighten it on. I'm using the inside, which is a half inch, half inch uh, drive right here for a ratchet. Okay, and then I recommend you having torque torque wrench. And this one has the half inch drive I need. Torque wrench because it's recommended to have a specific torque. I will be installing the pedal assist on a 1000 watt e-bike motor kit. Okay, I got this from DIYoutlet.com. It's your typical made in China motor kit, okay? Instructions were pretty limited. We got eight magnets on our uh, pedal ring here and then we got a little sensor three wire sensor now from my electronics experience three wire sensor probably uses two reed switches all right and the three wires are for the common between the two reed switches and then there's reed switch one and reed switch two and if those two reed switches they can tell if you're pedaling forwards or pedaling backwards because you don't want to activate the motor when you pedal backwards or maybe you do we'll get into that later okay now for the first six months I rode without a pedal assist system and you can do that you can just use a throttle but it's not as efficient okay and it's hard to match the motor to what your speed is to get just that little bit of assist, right? That's why a pedal assist is good. It's the most efficient way to use your e-bike. Now, if a throttle is good for on and off operation, I'll throttle and then I'll pedal. I'll throttle and then I'll pedal. I'll get tired, pedal until I get tired, and then throttle it until I recover and then I pedal again, on off, on off, but I, I get tired of doing that and it puts a lot of strain on my drivetrain here. This is an older bike and the 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 the, the drivetrain on this thing is, is, is getting worn out. I like to save some wear and tear on it by using the motor. That's another nice thing about e-bikes. You can save some wear and tear on your chain and all your drivetrain. Let the motor do some work. Now, to install this pedal assist system, you have two options. Okay, you got the easy way, which is using epoxy tape and these zip ties or Velcro or whatever. You can just use those three things. That's the easy way the easy flimsy way right easy fix easy break more difficult way is what I did is you can wedge it between the bottom bracket okay now that is a much more secure way and that is what I would actually recommend to try to do first